The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. The previous uh, speaker from Virginia said, uh, talk about anything but. That's exactly what the Democrats are doing. That's exactly what they're doing. They don't want to talk about the crisis at the border. We've yet to have a hearing in this committee, the Government Oversight Committee, about the crisis at the border. They don't want to talk about the, the, the huge increase in crime because Democrats all over this country and, and municipals uh, and, and cities are defunding the police. They don't want to talk about inflation, the increased price of gas. They don't want to talk about the fact that every single employer I talk to in our district, I bet it's the same in yours, can't find people to work because when you pay people not to work, you shouldn't be surprised when you don't have workers. They don't want to talk about their, their, their bill that they introduced in the Judiciary Committee to pack the court. They don't want to talk about the fact they're going to raise taxes, they're going to ban firearms, and they're getting ready to hire more agents at the IRS to harass American citizens. We saw it just a week ago when tax returns against the law were leaked to the press. They don't want to talk about They want another Trump investigation. Here's what, this, here's what the chairwoman said in her opening statement just this morning. The committee released documents we obtained showing that the weeks leading up to the January 6th attack, President Trump repeatedly pressured the Department of Justice. Pressured the Department of Justice, they say. And in their press release, they say the White House Chief of Staff, uh, Chief of Staff pressured DOJ. Let's look at what the White House Chief of Staff said. He sent an email to Mr. Rosen, the Acting Attorney General. Can you have your team look into these allegations of wrongdoing? Wow. A lot of pressure there. Wants them to look into something. Every chief of staff, I bet, for every single one of us sends the same kind of emails and letters every day. You get constituents, you get people call you, you send it to the agency. Can you look into this? See what else Mr. Meadows had to say. Send a YouTube link. Imagine, I, I bet we've had some of our chiefs of staff send YouTube links to colleagues and to people in agencies. I, wow, that's pressure in the deep. How about this one? There have been allegations about signature match anomalies in Fulton County, Georgia. Can you get Jeff Clark to engage on this issue immediately if there's any truth to this allegation? Boy, that's a lot of pressure there. Mark Meadows putting a lot of pressure on people, asking, can you look into this allegation? Someone's raised it. After all, lots of Americans, 80, 90 million Americans had concerns with the election, but what are the Democrats doing? They're gonna launch another investigation, call in five people for depositions but we can't have the head of the Capitol Hill police here today like we wanted. Oh, it's interesting too, the response that the Attorney General gave to Mr. Meadows when he sent that email, I think this is interesting. He says, I can't believe this, I'm not gonna respond to the message below. Wow, wow, that's, that's a, that is a problem. When the President, when the Chief of Staff to the President of the United States asks someone in the executive branch to do something and they basically give him the finger, I think that's the problem we should be looking into, but that's not what the Democrats are going to look into. No, they got another investigation. We can't, we can't talk about the border crisis here. Can't have, we hadn't had one hearing in this room about that. Can't do that. They want to investigate Trump again, even though the Obama Department of Justice spied on President Trump's campaign, lied to the FISA court 68 times, not Jim Jordan, that's, that's Inspector General Horowitz, 68 times in the Carter Page FISA alone. We can't look into those issues. We're going to do another investigation about pressuring people by sending emails to the Justice Department. Somehow that's now pressuring. So uh, I, I appreciate our witnesses coming here today. But when the, when the chairwoman raised that in her opening statement, sends out a big press release saying they're going to do this, it just, again, underscores that this committee is not doing what it should do. I'll say it again. The fact that we have yet to have a hearing on a situation on our southern border where for not one month, not two months, but three months in a row, we've set record numbers of illegal immigrants coming into this nation, and we can't have a hearing in this committee. But we're going to investigate Mark Meadows sending an email to the Justice Department saying, hey, there's been allegations raised. Can you check it out? Wow. Wow. The taxpayers are going to love the work that we're going to do with this. They're going to love it. This, this is ridiculous. What, what, what the Democrats pretend to be the work of Congress now is ridiculous. New investigation about Mark Meadows asking to someone to look into. I yield back. That's enough. The gentleman yields back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. 
That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are. When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that, and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, that. last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focus on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, that, that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, that, where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring uh, vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage up, across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. 
And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy, it, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.